continuing the uh, topic of uh, arrhythmias, I have the uh, pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Sri Vatsan. Uh, Sri has been my colleague for many years, over 16 years now at Mayo. He's the current head of the arrhythmia division. He's going to talk on a topic that also you see a lot in clinic, which is non-sustained ventricular tachycardia in PVCs and what you should know and what kind of workup you should do. Thanks, Sri. Uh, thank you, Luis, uh, for inviting me for a uh, successive number of years. I think now Luis has been in charge for over 10 years. I, I do see on the geographical attendance that many of you are not from the Southwest, so be careful. The margaritas are a little bit more potent here. <laughs> and so one is not enough, but three is too many. And if the number of people showing up tomorrow is a little less, we will know why. So let me uh, start you off with this 41-year-old uh, presenting with shortness of breath. Uh, this is actually uh, a, a patient with an ejection fraction of 35%. Coronary angiogram is normal. This number, about 38,000, always uh, bothers us. We usually, anything over 20,000, we usually get a little bit more excited especially the ejection fraction where to be abnormal. Uh, so this is a 12 lead EKG. He was in continuous bigeminy. Uh, for those of, the, uh, those of us who are cardiologists, I mean EP oriented, this 2-3 AVF being positive is outflow tract and V1 being positive somewhere in the left ventricular outflow tract. And so we as usual take the patient for eventually an ablation, particularly if the ejection fraction were to be lower and the patient has decompensated heart failure, which does not improve with the administration of beta blockers and, direct, and uh, all the neuromodulating drugs. Although it is, looks a little scary that this is very close to the artery, you can see the other view, so always check the orthogonal view where it is a little different, so it's far away from the main artery. And typically, it's reasonable to ablate in these locations to get rid of the PVC. Obviously, when I show a case in the meeting, it's a very successful case. Um, I mean, I, I know the I mean, I'm not going to be crazy enough to show a failed at, attempt at ablation. But um, typically, you have near elimination or less than 1,000 PVCs that occur post-ablation. And the, obviously, the Holter monitoring now shows 49 PVCs in 24 hours, and the ejection.